Well, turning to international now, and the uh, Chinese market is one of the stronger performers over the past year, but is it still a good place to invest, you know, given what we're seeing with some of the declines in recent months? Well, let's go and find out. Alex Douglas from Monarch Securities is here with his sectors to watch. Alex, uh, welcome back to the program. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the Chinese Thank equity you. market was uh, no, the first to really get going after the pandemic hit, uh, but it's now starting to get a little bit shaky. What's your views as to what the future holds for Chinese stocks this year? Yeah, it certainly had a good good year last year. Uh, it was maybe outpaced a little bit by Korea and Taiwan, even India. Um, but, um, you know, it, it seems like the economy is still doing very well. Um, I think I read yesterday that Fitch is forecasting 8% growth uh, for China next year. Um, in the past month, we have had a pullback of about 15%. Um, there are some headwinds for, for China. Um, now that they're overcoming COVID, um, there's an unwinding of the stimulus packages. Um, there are concerns about tightening policy to rein in the growth. Um, and there's, of course, you know, rising tensions with North America and Europe um, that have led to, uh, led to some sanctions. But uh, our, our chief analyst at Monex, uh, Gordon Yan, has been having a look at this, and he actually thinks this pullback is uh, more of a buying opportunity. So one thing, just a big, big picture before we delve into um, stocks of interest is what's the strategy behind the, uh, the CCP saying they're only growing at 6% when I think the whole world is at 8% plus? Is there some sort of weird massaging going on there with expectations? Well, I, I think um, numbers that come out of China have always got to be... Um, uh, you know, taken with a grain of salt. Um, we'll, we'll see after the fact, I guess. Um, it's one of those areas that's always a little bit uncertain, um, but still, you know, 6%, 8%, it's strong growth either way. Yeah, no, that's true. So a bit like we talk about here in Australia is, you know, what stocks were bashed over COVID and therefore what stocks are going to be performing over the year ahead. What sectors are you looking at there? Well, one, one area that's been holding up um, reasonably well over the past month, you know, the, the broader Chinese market, as I just mentioned, has had a bit of a pullback in the last month. But one area that's been holding up has been uh, transport, travel, airports, um, and in particular, uh, some of the airline stocks. Um, you know, I think now that China is doing quite well in containing COVID, um, that, that's one positive for them. Uh, you've also got a lot of national holidays coming up. You've got Qingming Festival in April, then you've got a long, a long uh, Labor Day Golden Week coming up in, uh, in May. And there'll be a lot of pent up demand for travel among, among the Chinese people. Um, obviously, international travel is still difficult, um, but you know, the, the demand for, for going somewhere, I think, will be quite strong, uh, especially after last year. So it looks like these airline stocks, um, which have been holding up well, they've, they've had a bit of a dip in the last day or two, but um, it seems like you know they, they could be certainly somewhere to look at. Um, as I mentioned, Gordon thinks this is a good buying opportunity. Alex, uh, there's a lot of interest in Chinese equities here in Australia. It's obviously a, a growth market that a lot of people are eyeing off for the future. What are some of the things though that you should know investing as an Australian into the Chinese markets? And, uh, Chinese A and B shares in particular, how does that work? And also actually, I, I've just mentioned, you, um, I, I noticed in the, in the little segment before this, you talked about some of the pressure on Chinese stocks that are listed on the New York Stock Exchange in, in the US. Um, and you know the fact that they may have to delist in the US if they're not willing to open their books to, to the auditors over there. Um, but most of those companies are also listed either in China or in Hong Kong. Um, Within China, there are, as you mentioned, A shares and B shares. Traditionally, the A shares were mainly for uh, for locals in China. Um, they're denominated in the local currency, so Chinese yuan, renminbi. Um, and it was in the past very difficult for outsiders to invest in those shares. Um, they were sort of relegated to what were called China B shares, um, which were denominated in foreign currency, usually, usually US dollars. Um, the B shares aren't so popular now, um, but with the A shares, access to them has been um, opened up greatly in the last about six years. Um, when a program started through the Hong Kong Exchange, there's uh, Hong Kong Connect, or Shanghai Connect, Shenzhen Connect, which means that um, foreigners can engage in what's called northbound trading through Hong Kong, and it allows you to invest directly into the Chinese listings of some of these companies. 
So just in terms of, um, we've had other guests talking about Hong Kong shares, the fact that the Hong Kong was completely rejigged in order to capture you know, more of the market. And is some of that trying to capture that Chinese money as well? Yeah, sure. So it, it goes both ways. Um, so um, if there are Chinese people that wish to invest in the Hong Kong market, they can do that. That's, uh, that's what they call southbound trading. Um, so you know, the, there are stocks within the Hong Kong market that, that are part of this, uh, this Stock Connect program. Alex Douglas, Monarch Securities Managing Director, thanks for joining us on the program today. Great, thank you.